quick, stop what you're doing and commit your full attention to this informative session. Attention, all fitness enthusiasts and aspiring athletes. Are you ready to unlock the true potential of your glutes and revolutionize your training regimen? Join us for an exclusive live teaching session where we delve deep into the science behind one of the most effective lower body exercises, the barbell hip thrust. Led by renowned exercise scientist and personal trainer, Dr. Flex. This session promises to be a game changer in your fitness journey. With a wealth of knowledge and expertise in exercise physiology, biomechanics, and muscle activation techniques, I will guide you through every step of the hip thrust with precision and clarity. Hip extension is a fundamental movement in daily life and athletic activities. You don't have to have a PhD in exercise science to understand this. If you know how to walk, run, or jump, you've surely experienced it before. Research has always supported the role of hip extensor musculature with heavier lower body exercises such as the squat, the lunge, and the deadlift, and its direct correlation in explosive sport actions such as jumping, sprinting, or change of direction. But note, I said heavier. (laughs) The amount of stimulus and the amount of time under tension shall determine the results. There must be a goal in mind. How will you grow your booty with minimal five-pound glute kickbacks so your little rubber band monster walks? No. These are just supplemental exercises. Granted, they help ingrain and improve movement pattern and prepare you for the heavier lifts. Yeah. But it's not enough. While it may seem like a bummer, (laughs) and the pun pun is fully intended, for real, a booty pump can be just what your body needs to look better, perform better, and feel better, too. The good news, <laughs> you don't have to spend precious time searching for other exercises. Just watch this video from start to finish. Pay attention to the cues I give my companion, Miyadi, and bring your new and improved mindset to your next training session. Heavy hip thrusts for the freaking win, folks. <laughs> Comment, like, And subscribe. Uh, Wait, uh, comment, like, and subscribe, especially if you want to see me hip thrust 500 pounds in my next video. Because, you know, that's just easy. But this entertainment is all for y'all. Thank you for tuning in. This audio was brought to you by Dr. Flex. What were we about to do with this? We're about to do hip thrusts. Oh, okay. Uh, But we'll we'll learn the movement with this. You could try it again. Or you want me to demonstrate again? The same hip thrust that we were doing over there. Oh, those are hip thrusts. Let me try. You had it like this. And you just lift up. You got to step out a lot farther. A lot farther? What do you want to do? No, like, what am I doing with my arm? Can you, like, watch? Just tell me, like, what to fix. So I'm bending. My arm just reach. Are you getting out a lot farther? I need to go out farther. All right, like two steps. It's, mm-hmm. it's supposed to. So try and lean forward this much as, as much as you can. <laughs> So I'm bending, and I just lean forward. Let's take a deep breath. Like like you got to lift a car. Okay, that's it. That was pretty good, but I'll show you. So there's a difference between a squat and then a hip thrust. When a hip thrust, you're fucking like... With a squat, you're trying to you're trying to sit down into a chair. So, was so I this is squatting. Are you squatting? Okay. So, like I said, 
it's your hips that are moving forward. It's not only your knees that are moving up and down. Let's try it again. Oh, I don't know. It's it's all good. We'll move on to the next thing. And um, I'll give you a different exercise. But what are you doing then with the bar? The hip thrust with the bar? I'm, I'm going to show you right now. Uh, I guess you could stand right there. So that so that didn't even hit you. Um, I don't think there's a pad. Normally there will be a pad right here. But you, but you sit it in a place that doesn't hurt. So it's still a thrust. Your pelvis is going towards the sky. So like this. You're going to let it come all the way down. And then you're going to thrust, thrust towards the sky again. Hmm? I'll have to put on some weight. I'll have to put on some weight for mine. So you can sit down. I'll set you up. Let's do it. It's your it's your upper back that's gonna be on the bench. Please be patient. <laughs> I got you. Uh, stand up. Wait, but am I putting my hands on it or? <laughs> Supposed to be able to just balance. Okay, balance it. Okay. This is where you're at. See where my upper back is? So your upper back, your upper back is with on the bench, and you're lowering, you're lowering your butt, trying to touch the floor, and then you're getting the floor to your side. Thank you for being patient. Oh, guys. It's like that. Mm -hmm. Yay. Oh. oh, take that. Oh, who's that? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, take your legs out. Higher, higher. Try and get the bar to my hand a little bit more. So that's that's how high it should go. Ten. Oh, was it? It was. It was eight. But I'll give you this. That was eight, really. You got it done, yes. On the next set. Grandson. Oh, my bad. I'm tripping. I got to go on. <laughs> yeah. It's my turn. Hold on. Uh, this this is what we're doing in between. So, say, say again. Th this is what we're doing in between. So, and then back. And uh, you you go back and forth three times. Okay. Chest up. No. Chest up. Oh, chest up. Oh, I feel it. Oh. In my boot thing. Wanted to take this time in between us working as hard as we possibly can to talk about a couple of cues and commonalities in life. The average individual struggles to contract their glutes isometrically, let alone one butt cheek at a time. But as you progress... In your exercise and movement journey, you'll realize that 
Having the ability to isometrically contract any muscle gives you more control and prepares you for the movement. Hence why we are doing these crab walks. I want the chest to be up, the tongue to be pointed towards the roof of the mouth, and the movement to be as slow and controlled as possible because we are trying to rewire our neuromuscular system to contract upon our command. The body listens to the brain. That's what I got, folks. Oh, you want to check the tape? You can check the tape. You can check the tape. Last time. <laughs> Full counting powers. Activated. Yeah, this will definitely help. Mm -hmm. So now it should be a little bit easier to set up because you can you can inch under it. It's also going to be easier because the pads are there. Mm -hmm. Because the pads are there, so like it doesn't actually like hurt hurt your chest. I mean, hurt the pelvis as much. Yeah. It does feel better. Uh huh. Do your knees go off? Yes. Even on the way down. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's three. Still counting. Stop. It looks like. Uh huh. It's Is it sliding? No. Four. Five. Throughout the editing process of this video, I realized that there was yet another stretch of time in which there wasn't that much chatting, but a whole lot of hard work being done. And I wanted to take the opportunity to explain a couple of principles, concepts, theories, etc. that I got in my mind that I want to explain to you so that you're a little bit more comfortable on what I am trying to teach. And then you can replicate it or you can share it with a friend or family member. See, progressive overload is a fundamental principle in strength training. Life. That involves gradually increasing the demands placed on the muscles, the mind, etc. over time to stimulate growth and adaptation. This can mainly be achieved by incrementally increasing the weight lifted, number of repetitions performed, or the frequency of training sessions. Allowing for more continuous improvements in muscle size, strength, endurance, comfortability, confidence, right? But one of the most important factors to me is a slow progression. It shouldn't be an extreme jump in weight for each set, particularly if you're not that well trained. And here's the thing, progressively overloading the hip thrust offers a numerous amount of benefits for gluteal muscle development. And that's what we're trying to grow, right? We're trying to grow our booty, stimulating muscle growth and hypertrophy in the glute max, as I stated earlier, to, is going to lead to enhanced functional performance and activities such as running, jumping, squatting. And additionally, progressive overload promotes greater neuromuscular adaptation and recruitment resulting in more efficient muscle activation patterns and improved movement mechanics because guess what almost all of your muscles are coordinating in order to make sure that the, the weight gets up it's not only your glute max that feels the brunt of this situation your core got to work too, no, right? Additionally, I wanted to talk about the auxiliary the exercises that are done up. after the compound exercise. See, 
performing auxiliary exercises such as the crab walk, monster walk, whatever you want to call it, the banded walk, right? Performing auxiliary exercises immediately following compound exercises like the hip thrust, like the squat, like the deadlift, is to ensure that after the muscles have been primed and activated from the compound exercise, you can improve its responsiveness with the subsequent exercises and target similar muscle groups without the same amount of metabolic and mechanical fatigue that is induced by a large compound movement like the squat or deadlift. And this is going to lead to greater muscle fiber recruitment and metabolic stress specifically to the glute max, but not necessarily your entire body. See what I'm saying? So the purples are the purples are fifty five. So we got fifty five. We got fifty five four times. Plus the greens are ten. Y'all do the math. This is the top set. On Monday, on the Monday we was already doing. On Monday we was already doing legs. So this doesn't. This isn't necessarily a max session. Uh, we're, tie we're tying it in with... My bad. We're tying it in with the resistance band crab walks for further glute stimulation. Uh, this is the first time that Miss Niadi is working out, so... Uh, she's doing great. Additionally, these auxiliary exercises can help with addressing any remaining muscle imbalances or weaknesses to further enhance your muscle symmetry, strength, and overall functional capacity. And what do you think I mean by muscle imbalances? See, when you're doing the crab walk, it is forcing you to externally rotate the knees, a crucial action to maintain proper alignment of your hips and pelvis proper alignment leads with the physics of the movement the internally rotating the knee leading to a valgus collapse might not help you initiate the same amount of force production plenty of reasons why if you would like more explanation on reasons why, you know, drop a comment <laughs> below. But that mind and muscle connection cannot be overlooked. And particularly for individuals like yourself <laughs> that might not be as well trained, an auxiliary exercise like the crab walk or anything else can definitely help with getting the biggest bang for your buck from your exercise session um enough from the rant though thanks for listening i think that concludes the weightlifting portion of this workout i thought we were going to do hip thrust using the resistance band and the kettlebell. But I think what we're gonna do is work on some more coordination. And plus, the resistance band might be a little bit too heavy for her. So rather than uh, using out time, trying to gain some stability, we'll just go have fun over at the box rooms. <laughs> which prevent the body from rotating and collapsing. Raising one leg increases the level of difficulty in two ways.
First, it intensifies the load on the gluteus maximus of the active leg. Second, it activates many stabilizers that prevent pelvic and spinal rotation, which would not have happened if both legs were on the floor. The gluteus maximus extends the hip joint. In addition to strengthening the gluteus maximus muscle, another aim of the exercise is to strengthen the core muscles and the hip stabilizers. The inferior part of the gluteus maximus exhibits high EMG signal amplitude during the unilateral bridge exercise. The inferior part is active.